Okay, Mocha Don is right, is back at you. I am Mocha Don, and tonight we have some crazy and dangerous leftists. I mean, these people are out of their mind, and they are a danger to our democracy. Even though we are a republic, the states are, in fact, representative democracies. And the federal government is partially representative democracy, but we are a constitutional republic. Never mind that. Let's hear what the crazy people have to say. So we begin <laughs> with Keith Olbermann, oh, who we're, we're oh. adding to our repertoire, justifiably yes. so. Take mm -hmm. a watch. Oh, no. The conservatives on the Supreme Court are Trump's whores. <laughs> Chief Justice Roberts is a Trump whore and he can burn in hell. And Justice Alito <laughs> is a Trump whore and he can burn in hell. And Justice Gorsuch is a self-contradicting Trump whore and he can burn in hell. And Justice Kavanaugh is a drunken abuser Trump whore, and he can burn oh, in wow. hell. And Justice hell. Barrett is a handmade Trump whore, and she can burn uh, in hell. They are corrupt. Wow. They have corrupted the Supreme Court. We will have to remove them from the Supreme Court or create a replacement for the Supreme Court. Yes. Oh, that's oh classic. Huh. That's excellent. Good. It's a good plan. Yeah, I think that's, awesome. that's when the whores that's, come in. He's wow. mentally ill, by the way. Yeah, there's, there's something, something wrong. wrong with him. I mean, every time I see him, I thought he disappeared. He used to have a show on television. I don't know if the people remember that, but yeah. he used to, it was the worst person in the world. Yeah. And yeah. the irony was, is it was always him. <laughs> right? always. And no one really got that. Yeah. And so, but now he's going to cancel the Supreme Court. If you think about the, the court, as the Supreme Court of the United States and a rational actor and a decent one, that was a reasonable supposition, and it just turns out they're not that. Um, feel, you know, incremental bit of progress here. The important question here is not whether the Supreme Court is going to decide that Donald Trump and all presidents are immune from prosecution for things they commit, crimes they committed while they were president. I mean, it would be fully insane for them to actually side with Trump here, right? The conclusion that we can arrive at now based on what they have done without having to wait for the ruling is that they are ensuring that Trump will not face trial. And when they inevitably rule that presidents aren't immune from prosecution after they leave office, what that will tell Donald Trump, if by then he is president, is that he can never leave the office of the presidency. Right. And if he is voted out in 2028, he cannot leave office and he is willing to com he, is, he is welcome to commit any crimes he wants to as long as he is still president in order to ignore the result of that election and stay in power for life, because otherwise he is going to go to prison when he gets out. They're the most racist, xenophobic, anti-immigrant, anti-gay geodemographic group in the country. Second, they're the most conspiracist group. QAnon support and subscribers, election denialism, COVID denialism, and scientific skepticism. Schaller later added he believed rural America doesn't believe in a free press, are more likely to be white nationalists, and more likely to be Christian nationalists. What it says is that they are cor corrupted political actors who act in bad faith. The reason why people like Mark and people like Dahlia seem to have a crystal ball is because they're real because they're realists and they understand the court for what it is. And at some point, people in the media, people at home, and people sitting in the White House have to stop pretending that the Supreme Court is some kind of benign, trying to do its best institution and start to realize that there are six Republicans, not conservatives, Republicans on the Supreme Court who view it as their job to help the Republican Party. And until we do something about that, until we take away that power, until we draw the line on them there, they will continue to do this. They will help Trump. They will take away abortion rights. They will end affirmative action. They will liberalize gun rights. They will do all of it until we stop them. And somebody, somebody needs to start listening in the higher echelons of the Democratic Party because we will keep losing every day we allow these six republicans in robes to rule over all of us okay well i don't think we need to go too far into saying that these people are insane they are crazy but the point of bringing this out was that they aren't just crazy they are dangerous is there anyone out there who thinks that this group of people wouldn't lock you up 
Do you not think they would load you into trains? They see you as vermin, especially if you're a white rural person. I'm as far on the right as anybody I know. And I think I have never met a white racist. And I have talked to one once. I think it was in 2013 doing a loan application. His loan was declined. So, I mean, obviously, Keith Oberman is insane. He's mentally ill. That's obvious. Rachel Maddow is not mentally ill. She's a sycophant leftist. And obviously, she thinks Donald Trump is going to win the election. So for all of the democracy that she's trying to protect, our democracy, right? We, we have to protect our democracy. Ignores the fact that she doesn't care that he's about to get elected president of the United States. And he's going to get elected president of the United States because the agenda of the left has been a complete and abysmal failure. This bizarre idea that the president of the United States is not immune from post office prosecution. Well, perhaps he is and perhaps he isn't. The Supreme Court has never made a ruling on that. That's probably why they're taking the case up. It's a novel constitutional question. But then consider for a moment, if the president's not immune, Barack Obama killed two American citizens without any due process whatsoever. One of them was a complete innocent, a teenager, and he was murdered by Barack Obama overseas with a, a, a drone strike. I personally didn't have a big problem with that given the circumstances, but seriously, you want to be able to charge Barack Obama with murder? There's no statute of limitations on murder. Joe Biden committed all kinds of felonies, having documents in his garage so that Hunter could rifle through them. This is, this is ludicrous. Joe Biden has committed felonies while he's been in office, in my opinion. And then you've got all the bribery. I think he's going to get impeached for that. He's not going to get removed because the Democrats would never remove one of their own. And you need how many votes? 67 votes to remove a president from office in the Senate. 67. You only need a majority of the House to, to uh, effectively indict. An impeachment in the House is effectively an indictment. And we can see from Donald Trump that, that you can indict a ham sandwich, as they say. Donald Trump's been indicted. He's never been in any way, shape, or form convicted of a crime. Most of the things, in fact, all of the things, as best as I can tell, and all of his indictments he's accused of doing are either not crimes at all, like talking to the vice president while you're president, or the, the only possible criminal culpability would be Mar-a-Lago, and he only did what every other president before him has done and what Joe Biden quite illegally did when he was just a vice president. And I, I think even if he is to be convicted of that, that nothing's going to come of it. They're going to say, don't, don't do that again and, and let him go because God help them if they jail Donald Trump. I can't imagine a scenario in which a president is not immune from prosecution after he leaves office for acts which were within the purview of the office. Can he shoot the maid in the White House for fun? No, he can't do that. But certainly he can investigate credible allegations of election corruption, and there have been a ton of them, and courts have found that things were corrupt, and courts have found that votes appeared from nowhere, and courts have found that uh, unconstitutionally voting procedures were changed by secretaries of state when it had to be done by the state legislature. So there, there was a lot wrong with the 2020 election. And nothing Donald Trump was accused of doing around January 6th or with any respect to the elections is even a crime. They make it up out of whole cloth. The Supreme Court, while they're going to set the boundaries they are, they are going to have a ruling, and it will find that presidents are immune from post office criminal prosecution 
because that's just necessary. As Donald Trump says, you can't have a president second guessing himself as to whether or not he's going to get prosecuted by the opposing party. We have never seen a more anti-democratic, anti-rule of law group of people than we have now. And they're crazy and dangerous. So that's what I have to say about it. I don't know about you, but it's time to start taking these people seriously. They are tyrants. They want to impose tyranny. They want to eliminate the main check and balance on our crazy elected elected leaders, which is the judiciary. They want to magically change the Constitution. And they don't care that the Constitution says it takes 38 states, you know, three quarters of the states, 38 states, to amend the Constitution. It takes 38 states to call for a constitutional convention. They're not going to hang out to get 38 states to agree because 38 states are not insane and they're not going to agree to do anything that these people want to do. But these are the people that are feeding the BS to the ignorant who aren't paying attention. And they are dangerous. And I don't advocate locking them up. And I don't advocate putting them in re-education camps like Hillary would like to do with the right. But I do advocate that there be some counterbalance to that. And we don't have any major media counterbalance. The only real counterbalance are the Tucker, Tucker Carlson's and others, the Jordan Peterson's, the folks on the Daily Wire, the Ben Shapiro's, you know, people I don't agree with any of them perfectly, but they're at least rational actors pointing out how crazy these people are because these people are crazy and dangerous. Anyway, that's it for today. Please like, comment, subscribe. We need your help. We're a small channel. And God bless. Thank you for watching the show. You have a fantastic week.